Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf uh, Lamadala, Daf 34 of Masech the Sukkah. Um, Chavit, friends, we have a three Mishnah day. A three Mishnah day. Um, those three Mishnahs are discussing Arava. Uh, yeah, this is like, what is the Arava and stuff? And then we get up to the, uh, another Mishnah, which discusses like, all right, how many Adasim, how many Aravos, how many Lulavs, how many Esrigs, that kind of stuff. Interesting uh, discussion over there. Of course, we know what we do, but maybe there are other opinions. And the third Mishnah discussing the Esrig, moving on to Esrig, right? So we've already discussed the Lulav, the Adasim. Today we're discussing Arava, and now we are going to be moving on to um a Mishnah about Esrig as well. So, Hever, let us begin. We're going to start with a new Mishnah on Daf Lama Gimel Mudbez towards the bottom. Arava Gizula Viveshe Psula. An Arava that is stolen or that is dried out is possible. Shall Sheriff Shilir and Psula. If the Arava came from a Arava tree that was worshipped for Avodazare um, or from a condemned city because too many people there were doing Avodazare. Psula, Niktam Rosho, if the top of the Arava is clipped, Nifitzualea, if the leaves have fallen off, Bat Saftsafa, Psula, Saftsafa, which is sort of a puzzle kind of Arava, it's not a proper Arava, it's, uh, it got, um, um, uh, like round leaves and stuff, it's not, it's not a kosher, uh, sort of, what do we call it? Uh, uh, strain of Arava, maybe? Kmusha, if it's withered, vishenashu mikza salea, or if uh, some of the um, leaves fell off, like some of the leaves fell off, but most of them are still there, vishal ba'al, or if it doesn't, ca- if, if it comes from a um, rainy field, kshere, it's kosher. Lemaise, uh, uh, what's a stebal? A stebal is, so kilu, ar- what's aravis? Aravis is arve nachal, right? These aravis that grow on a stream. So the, the pashtus is, the simple explanation is that they would have to grow on a stream. Um, so what we're saying here is that even ba, even aravos of a, a stay baal, a, a, a field that is not on a stream, but rather, you know, it's a field that relies upon rainwater. Um, that is also a kosher aravos. So we said the, the last things that we said is kimusha. If it's like a little bit withered, of course, I'm sure as many of us know, the aravos, they, they dry out pretty quickly. So once they're, as we said at the beginning of the mission, arava, if it's, if it's dried out, it's a problem. However, if it's just, Sort of baderech, if it's on the way. So then, so then it is, uh, it's still kosher. And if some of the leaves fell off, it's kosher. And an arava that grows, not necessarily on a stream, but in like a field that relies upon rainwater, that's also acceptable to an rabbana. The rabbi's taught says the Gemara, Ave nachal, hagdelin ala nachal. Okay. So the Pasuk says that, um, aravis from a stream, so that they grow on a stream. Dover acher, ave nachal shal olish, that its leaf is, is, is sort of long, kind of like a stream is like a long kind of thing. So also they have long leaves. Um, you know, of course, right. We, you know, I'm sure many of us here have seen Aravis. They, uh, the leaf, they're longer leaves. They're not short leaves. Okay. Tani we have another Bryce that says, Avinachal, Ainli El Avinachal. So when the Pasuk says, these, I don't know, willows of a stream. So all I know is willows that grow on a stream. What about willows that grow in the backyard? What about over here in Yerushalayim, in Achlaot, in Bate Broida? Bate, uh, Bate Broida, right? Yeah, Bate Broida. They have, they have an Aravis tree. They have a tree in the middle of Darton. There's no stream in Bate Broida. So how do we know that that's okay? Shabal So a, uh, a, uh, Arave tree that grows on a field that relies upon rainwater, or if it's in a, mount, a mountainous area, Mina, and how do we know that, that that's also acceptable? Tamadoma arve mikomakum arve is plural to include uh, all sorts of aravis. They don't have to grow on a stream. Okay? Abishol Omer says, Abishol arve shtaim achas lulav achas lemiktosh. Interesting. Says Abishol so as opposed to the Tanakama, who learns out that Arve is plural to include all sorts of Aravis, even from like a Stebal or from a, uh, the mountains, says Abishol, no, that's not the point of Arve being plural. The point of Arve being plural is to say, Achas lelulav, achas that there's two 
contexts in which we use in Arave on Sukkis. One is, of course, in the Oshayna for, for a Lulav. The other context where we use Aravis on Sukkah is to surround the Mizbeach, to write the Hoshainis, at least like, you know, like what we refer to as Hoshainis, that, uh, you know, after, you know, in Shul we walk around the, 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 the Bima with the Sifrit Torah. So they would walk around the, uh, they would walk around the Azare, and um, with the, um, with, with, with the Aravis and the Beis Hamikdash. I think it was the Azare. Was it the Azare? I don't know. We'll learn about it soon. But, uh, the, I'm sorry, the, 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 the Mizbeach, which I guess the, um, the Mizbeach was what? It was in the Ezra's, uh, Kohanim, right? Yeah. Anyways, so they would walk around the Mizbeach with, with the Aravis, so that also, so Arve is plural, so one to teach the Arava from the Hoshina, the other one the Arava, that they would surround the Mizbeach with the, um, Aravis. Okay? Fine. Uh, the rabbis of the Mikdash Menalu, how do the rabbis know that, so the rabbis who learn from Arve to teach all sorts of Aravis, right? The ones that grow on the stream, the ones that grow from rainwater, the ones that are in the mountains. So how do they know that there was also Aravis in the Beis HaMikdash? So, Hilchsa Gemirei Lehu, so it's Allah Chalmosh Misina Lemaise. The rabbis say the Aravis in the Beis HaMikdash are Allah Chalmosh Misina, the Amr Rabbasim, Rabbi Yochanan, Esenitir, Sarova, Venisu Chamaim, Allah Chalmosh Misina, that the Esther Netiyas, who could tell me what the ten Netiyas are? The ten Netiyas are that when it comes to Shviyas, when it comes to Shemitah, so already 30 days before Shemitah, we stop kind of uh, plowing fields and stuff. Um, we add on to Shemitah Shtikl. However, if we say that if there is a field that is a base saw, if it is 50 Amis by 50 Amis, so then if there are 10 saplings that are planted in there equal equidistant, you can actually plow the entire field up until um, Shemitah begins. Arove, the fact that we, um, surround the Mizbeach with the Arovis and the Beis Amikdash, Venisu Chamayim, and that on Sukkis, in addition to Nisu Chayayin, by the Korban Tomit Shal Shachar, we also, right, in addition to the wine libations, we do water libations only on Sukkis, only by the Tomit Shal Shachar. All of these things, the Asenetias, the Arove, and the Nisu Chamayim, are Allah Lemoshim Sinai. Um, so that is how we know, that's how the Chachamim, who learn out from Arve, that it includes also and you know, stay Baal and Shebeharim. Uh, uh, so, how do they learn out also that there's Arabas in the Mikdash? Salacha, Lemoshe, Misina, Tana Rabbana, the Rabbis taught, Arvin Achal, Agdela Salanachal, Prat, Litzavtsofa, Agdela bin Aharim. Says the, um, so taught the rabbis in the Beis Medrash that when the Postuk says Arvin Achal, so. So the willows need to grow on a stream. Prat. The tzavtzafa agdele bin aharim. To the exclusion of tzavtzafa. Because these tzavtzafa, they grow among the mountains and they are excluded. So now, Amr Abzera micro. So Abzera says, what's a pasuk? What does this mean, what's a pasuk? It means that what we had said earlier, that arve mikomakom. That when it says arve, which is plural, it comes to include all kinds of aravas. Even if it's a stabal, even if it's shebaharim. Yet we seem to be excluding this Tzavtzafa. So why not include it in Arve like we include the Baal and the, and the Aravos in the mountains? Why are we excluding Tzavtzafa? So the Pazuk says, Kachamayim Rabim Tzavtzafa Samu. So Pazuk in Yirmiya, it's a shtikol tochacha, rebuke of the Yidden. And the Pazuk says, Kachamayim Rabim, that the Abe, and we're going to see Rabbi Abo explain this pasuk in a minute, but the point is that, that, right, that, 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 that Yechezkel is saying to Yidin, Kachamayim Rabbim, that the Abishta says that I wanted you to be Kachamayim Rabbim. I wanted you to be like these Gishmake, Starke Aravis that grow on the, on, on strong waters, on great waters, but Tzavtsafa Samu. Instead, you made yourselves like Tzavtsafa. So we see that Kilu. The ideal is this, Kachamayim Ram, the ideal is Aravis, but the Yidden in the end made them kind of a Shvera alternative, which is Tzavtzafa. So we see that there's Arava is one thing, that's the good thing, and Tzavtzafa is, is a, a lower level, a lesser level, uh, a, 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 a Shvera Zach. So, so, so we see that Tzavtzafa are excluded from Aravis. There's Aravis, which is what we want, Tzavtzafa is what we don't want. Right, the Novi says, Kachamayim Rabbim, that the Abishter wanted us to be like Amayim Rabbim, like Aravis, 
But in the end, Tzavtzva Samo, the Yidin made themselves like Tzavtzva, which is a, a lesser a lesser thing. Amr Abai, Abai, Abai says to Abzera, Vidilma, but wait, maybe, Parushakam Mefarish, wait, maybe you can understand that Pasuk slightly different, which is, Kachamayim Rabim, I want the Yidin to be like this Kachamayim Rabim. Umaynu, what is Kachamayim Rabim? Tzavtzva. It's even Tzavtzva. That, um, so maybe Tzavtzva Davka is Aravis. Imkain my Samo. So then what's the point of Samo? That Kilo, the point is that the Pasuk is saying that, the Ebrish is saying that I wanted the Yidin to be like Hachamayim Ram. I wanted the Yidin to be like Aravis. And instead they made themselves, they placed themselves somehow, they made themselves like Tzavtzafah, which is uh, not not very good. Amr Babo says, Amr Babo, Amr HaKadosh Baruch Hu says the Ebrish to Ani Amarti, Sheyuhu Yisrael Afanik HaKachamayim Rabim. I said, I wish that the Yidin should be like Hachamayim Rabim. Um, I knew what is Hachamayim Rabim? Arave. I wanted the Yidin to be like Aravis. And they instead made themselves like Tzavtzafa, which is, which is a lower level thing, uh, not, not included in, in Aravis, which is the ideal thing. And, um, similarly, as applied to the Alachis of, uh, of Sukkis and the Hoshaina. So we're looking for Aravis. We are not looking for Tzavtzafa. Ika Demasni La. Like Ramas Nisa, to those who teach that actually this pasuk is included in the brisa, it's not that Reb Zera comes up with this pasuk, but rather included in the brisa is Kachamay Ram Tzavtz Fasamo. This pasuk of Kachamay Ram Tzavtz Fasamo and Maskif Reb Zera. Then Reb Zera is the one who asks what Abai had initially asked in the first version, which is Vidilma Parusha Kamefarish Kachamay Ram Maniu Tzavtz Fa. Maybe the pasuk is actually just you know Tzavtz Fa is an action actually an ex. Explanation of Kachamayim Rabim, that what is Kachamayim Rabim? It's Tzavtzafa, Imkain my Samo. But if that's the case, then how do you understand Samo? No, Tzavtzafa is not an explanation of Kachamayim Rabim, rather it's an alternative. Meaning, I wanted, says God, that the Eden should be like Kachamayim Rabim, like Aravis, but instead they made themselves like Tzavtzafa. And Amr Babo says, Babo, Amr HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ani Amaiti Shu Yisrael, Afanik Kachamayim Rabim, says the Ebishter that he wished, that he would have hoped, that the Eden would be like Kachamayim Rabim, would be like Aravis, whom I knew, Aravis, and instead, they made themselves like Tzavtzafa, which is not a good thing. Okay, so, no using Tzavtzafa. Tanur Rabban and the Rabbis taught, Ezu Aravah, Ezu Tzavtzafa. What's Aravah? What's Tzavtzafa? How do I know which one I'm getting? Maybe, maybe all this time I've been getting Tzavtzafa, I didn't even know. So says the Gemara, Aravah, Kanesh, Allah, Adam, Va'alash, Allah, Mashuch. That in Aravah, the, the branch is red. Va'alash, Allah, Mashuch, and it's got a long leaf. Ufiya Khalak and its edges are smooth. Tzavtzafa, Kanashela Lavon, a tzavtzafa, its branch is white, the alashela ogul, and its leaves are round, ufiya domilamago, and its edges are like a sickle. Vatani domilamago kosher. But we learn in a brisa that if you have a, a rava that is similar to a sickle, it's kosher. Domila messer posel, only if it's if the if the edges are like a saw, so then it is posel. Amabai kitanya ibi khilfagila. Okay, that's specifically Regarding Chilfagila. Alright, in that case, I guess it's kosher if it's like a magul. Amr Baish, Mamina Hai Chilfagila, kosher lo shaina. So that means that Chilfagila is kosher for the ho shaina as Aravis. Pshita, that's obvious. Okay. Maldatema ho ve is le shame livoi lo nis kosher. I may have thought to say that, well, since it's got a different name, Chilfagila, maybe it's not Aravis. Kamash Malan, that I guess it's, uh, it's an acceptable Arava, even though it's Chilfagila. Uh, uh, but I may, maybe I'll talk or argue that Chilfagila is not allowed. No, it says Arve Nachal, Arve is plural to include all sorts of things, even Chilfagila. Like I said regarding the Schach the other day, buy whatever they sell in the market is probably just the easiest way. You know, you go to the place where they're selling all the Lulavim, you see they have like a package of uh, Aravis. You, you know, if you get that and it says like Aleph Aleph and they charge you more for it, you're probably all right. Also, by the way, but the truth is, the, uh, the, the truth is actually, a Ravis, I don't could get, uh, often I talk, uh, if I'm here in Eretz Yisrael, I get the Aravis from Bate Boy, the Lamaisa. They have a big tree over there and you can just hop some Aravis. Uh, no, the truth is probably the first set of Aravis I probably buy with like, you know, like a set. You go to some place and you get like Lula Vadas and Maravis, you know, you can kind of throw it all in and kind of charge you a whole bunch. And then uh, that's probably the first round of Aravis, but they dry out. So then at a certain point when it gets embarrassing 
and um, you know it's you can't really convince yourself that the arovis are, are still moist um, and kind of everyone's kind of whatever you know gets to the point where like you don't want everybody to see you that clearly you're arovis or puzzle so so you go and you you go to Bate Broida, you you find whatever arovis are left on the tree you hop them and uh, you go weiter okay um, where are we okay Amr of Chizda says of Chizda Hanitzlos Mila Ishtini Shmai Mechichar Besamitosh. The following three things have changed their names, have really swapped names after the destruction of the second Besamitosh. Chavid is Taka a Gemara that we've seen before in Masechta Shabbos. Chalafta Arava, Aravta Aravta Chalafta. Arava got switched with Chalafta. So what was once Chalafta is now Arava. What was once Arava is now Chalafta. My nafkamina, the lulav, the nafkamina is, well, which one do you use for your lulav? Shipura, chatzotzarta, chatzotzarta, shipura. What was called the shofar is now chatzotzis. What was called chatzotzis is now shofar. My nafkamina, the shofar, shosh Hashanah. What's a nafkamina? Well, which one are you going to use for the shofar, for Rosh Hashanah? Psorta, 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 psorta. Um, there were different kinds of tables. So what was psorta is now psorta. What was, was psorta is now psorta. The man of Kamina the Mecca Chumemker. The man of Kamina is, well, if you're doing business and you need a Psora, so, you know, you have to know if you're needing a Psora or a Psorta. Amar Abayi says, Abayi Apa Ani Omer, I'll also say Bekasi Hovlila, Hovlila Bekasi. Abayi adds to the list, also Bekasi and Hovlila, those are like parts of the stomach of a cow. And the man of Kamina, what's the man of Kamina? Lemacha Tanim Sebaovi Beisakosis. Well, if there's a, a, a needle that's stuck in like the walls of the Beisakosis, so then it depends. If it's the base hakosis or kidu, one of them is thicker and one of them is thinner. So if the needle is stuck in the thicker ones, then it's kosher. Uh, it's, it's not a trefa. But if it's stuck in the thinner ones, then it is a trefa. So there are nafkaminas in terms of trefas, if it's the bekase or if it's the ovlila, and, and they got them um, mixed up. Omer Rava says Rava by Yosef, Ani, Afani, Omer, Bavel, Borsif, Borsif, Bavel. Also, the names Bavel and Borsif got mixed up. Lamai nafkamina, Ligite Noshin. The nafkamina is for writing, is for um, a, a, a get, a divorce document that uh, has the, the, in, in Masechna Gittin, they talk about um, that uh, a get that comes from Chutzar, it's, you have to say, Bufane Nechtom, Bufane Nechtom. So there's nafkaminas if it's Bavl or, or, or Borsif, because bor, in Bavl they have yeshivas and uh, you could you could assume that the get is authentic. Whereas in Borsif you can't, so Bavl and Borsif got mixed up, and they're Nafkaminis in terms of do you have to say before Nichtom, before Nechtom, that, that you know, witnesses who say that in front of me it was um, written and sealed. All right, sounds very nice. All right, friends, we get up to a new Mishnah now. This is very exciting stuff. Rabbi Shmuel Lomer says, Rabbi Shmuel, Shlosha Adosim, Vishte Aravis, Lulav Echad, Vesug Echad. I'm sure that that sounds very familiar uh, to people who shake Lulav. I assume most people probably do the following, which is, says Rabbi Shmuel, three Adasim, two Aravis, one Lulav, one Esrig. Even if, when it comes to the Adasim, even if two of them, the top is clipped off, as long as one of them is intact, it's kosher, the Gemara is going to ask, tell me more about this. Rabbi Tarifin says, Rabbi Tarifin says, even all three of them, could be clipped, and that's okay, because he doesn't require that they have to be harder, right? According to Reb Tarfin, um, he says, look, you need three Adasim, but uh, they don't have to be beautiful, and if all, even if all three are clipped at the top, that's fine. The interesting thing is, Rabbi Shmuel, who a second ago said that you need three Adasim, but two of them can be clipped. So like the Gemara is going to be like, I don't understand. If you need harder, so then all three of them have to be intact. If you don't need harder, so then all three of them can be clipped. Like, what's the deal with you know, and if you only need one hadas, which you're saying needs to be intact, then why bring the other two bichlal? So Rabbi Shmuel we needs needs a little bit of explanation. Rabbi Taifin says that you need three. Uh, I don't know if I said adasim or avos. I'm talking about adasim now, right? You need says says Rabbi Taifin, you need three adasim, um, but uh, they don't need to be harder, and therefore they can all be clipped. Rabbi Akiva says says Rabbi Akiva kshim shelula vechad veesrug echad kachados echad veharava achas says Rabbi Akiva one of each, one lulav. One Esrig, one Hadas, one Arafa. Says the Gemara Tanya, we learn in a price, Rabbi Shmuel Omer says, Rabbi Shmuel, pre eats Hadar, Echod. One Esrig. Kapas Tamarim, Echod. Right, the puzzle says Kapos Tamarim, but it's written without a Vav. Kapas, which is uh, singular. So Kapas Tamarim, Echod. 
one lulav, right? So one esrig, one lulav. On of eights of us, three words, shlosha. So three hadasim. Arve is plural, nachal shtaim, right? So arve nachal, arve is plural, so two aravas, okay? One lulav, one esrig, three hadasim, two aravas. And when it comes to the Adasim, says Rabbi Shmuel, you can even have two of them, the top being clipped off, one of them being intact, and that's fine. Rabbi Tarifin, Omer says, Rabbi Tarifin, Shlosha, that you need three Adasim, Vafilu, Shloshtun, Ketumim, even if all three of the Adasim are clipped, nonetheless, it is, it's fine. Rabbi Akiva, Omer says, Rabbi Akiva, Kshem Shalulav Echod, Ve'esrig Echod, just like um, there's one Lulav and one Esrig, Kachodos echad varava achas. There's also one hados and one arava. Amr Rabbi Eliezer says Rabbi Eliezer Yochol ye esrig imoyin baaguda achas. Is it possible that when we bundle together the oshina, the lulav, the adasim, the aravis, we also include the esrig? Right. Currently, I imagine most people, or I imagine most people, because that's what I do. Um, you have a like a bundle with the lulav, the adasim, and the aravis, and you have the esrig separate. So says Rabbi Eliezer, is it possible that the esrig should be somehow t- bundled together with the Oshina? So Omar, it says, V'chinemar pre-eitz hodor v'chapos t'morim, v'alolo nemar el kapos. So the, so the Gemara answers, no, the esrig remains separate because it says, V'lkach t'molochim, v'yom arishon pre-eitz hodor, Kapos tomorrow. It doesn't say pre eitz other vichapos tomorrow, which would mean that the vav is adding on to the esrig to say that together with the esrig you should also have a lulav. No, it's pre eitz other. You should take an esrig. And then separately there should be kapos tomorrow, ve'ana feitz avos, ve'ar v'nachal, right? You have kapos tomorrow, ve'ana feitz avos, ve'ar v'nachal. So those all go together. You have the lulav and the adasim and the aravos. Those are all a bundle. But the esrig is separate. And how do I know that you need all four species? If you're missing one, you got nothing. It says, It has to be a complete taking. You have, it's all or none. You have to take all four species. You can't just take, you know, parts of it. I don't understand Rabbi Shmuel's opinion. Rabbi Shmuel says that when it comes to the Hadasim, two of them can be clipped. You need three Hadasim. One of them needs to be intact. Two of them can be clipped at the top. Manoshach, I don't understand. Yishlemin boy, liboy nami kulu. If he says, look, Hadasim need to be complete. They can't be uh, clipped. Well, then that applies to all three Hadasim. Ilo boy yishlemin. And if you don't need complete Hadasim, if they're allowed to be clipped at the top, I feel chad nami lo. Well, then, you shouldn't need any of them to be intact, right? Rabbi Shmuel has this funny opinion where one of them needs to be intact, two of them don't need to be. He says, I don't get it. If, if being clipped is not a problem, so all three of them can be clipped. If you need them to be intact, all three should have to be intact. So, Amr Bira, Amr Abami, Chazbar, Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Shmuel Taka changed his mind. That initially he said that you need three Hadasim, but in the end, he says you just need one Hados. And therefore, um, you just need one hados, and that one hados needs to be intact. The other two hadasim you really don't need to bring at all, and therefore, even if they're clipped, it doesn't it doesn't matter, right? So it says Rabbi Shmuel, one of them needs to be intact because you just really need one hados, and it has to be intact. The other two, I mean, they could be clipped. It, does, it doesn't really matter because all you need is one hados. Am Rabbi Yehuda, Am Shmuel, Halacha Rabbi Tarfin. Rabbi Yehuda says the name of Shmuel that the halacha is like Rabbi Tarfin that. Um, that you don't need hadr when it comes to the hados, and therefore all three of them can be clipped. Vazda Shmuel, the time of Amr Lehu Shmuel Anu Dizavne Asa, and and Shmuel is um, consistent with his reasoning because Shmuel said to the hados merchants, Ashvu Vizabinu, make sure that you are selling the adasim for a fair price. The ilo. Because if you're not selling the Adasim for a fair price and you're charging too much, Darishna Luchu Krib Tarfin, I'm gonna put out a psak like Rib Tarfin. My time I'll come like Rib Tarfin, Ilay Mushum de Mako Villagers Lu Kriba Kiva, the Mako Tve. So Frak the Gamar, one second, I don't understand Shmuel. Meaning, what's going on? Shmuel's threatening the Hadas merchants. 
And he's saying, hey, hardest merchants, make sure that you're charging a fair price. Because if you start charging too much, I'm going to pass him that the is like Reb Tarfin and it's going to mess, it's going to destroy your business. How would it destroy the business? So destroy the business because look, Hadassim, you know, nowadays we have it down to a science, right? The Hadassim are, you have them all like three in a row and, and it's like a, it's like a, a braid. But Hadassim are the most complicated of all the Dalad me, uh, Esther is complicated too. But anyways, says, 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 um, Shmuel, you know, if, you know, I understand that, you know, it's not so easy to get perfect Hadassim and it's complicated. And, but if you're charging too much money, I'll pass him like Rib Tarfin, who says that they can be clipped and that you don't need harder. In which case, it'll be much easier to find kosher adasim because there's a, there'll be a lot, you know, it'll, it's a lot easier to find adasim when they don't have to be as perfect. So therefore, it says Shmuel, you know, if you're not charging a fair price, I'm going to pass in like Reb Tarfin, who's more lenient, which means that there's going to be a lot more adasim available and it'll drive down the prices. Now, Frech the Gemara, why is Shmuel threatening to pass in like Reb Tarfin? Reb Tarfin says that you need three Adasim. Sure, they can be clipped, but you still need three Adasim. Why isn't, Reb, why doesn't Shmuel threaten that he's going to pass in like Rabbi Akiva, who says that all you need is one Hadas, which means that the merchants are only going to be able to sell one third of the amount that they would sell otherwise. So, so, my time of what's Pshat with Shmuel? Elaim Mishum to Mekil. If he's saying that he's threatening that he's going to pass him like Reb Tarfin because he's more lenient because he says that the top could be clipped off. Why don't you, why doesn't he say threaten to pass him like Reb Akiva who's even more lenient and says that all you need is one Hadas, which means that the merchants will be selling a third of their quantity. To which the Gemara says, well, it's more lenient to say like Reb Tarfin because it's actually easier to find three Adasim with the tops clipped off than it is to find one perfect Hados. Um, and therefore, he's saying that if they uh, aren't being fair, he's going to paskin like Reb Tarfin, who is the most lenient opinion, and um, basically it's much easier to find um, Hadasim like Reb Tarfin. And therefore, um, if Shmuel would pass in like Rib Typhon, so then, so then, so then it would kind of flood the market almost and prices would go down. And, uh, that's why it was a threat. And we see that Shmuel passed in like Rib Typhon. Viter says the third mission of the day. Esrik agosov ayovish posel. If you have an Esrik that's stolen or dried out, posel. Shall shev shel inidachas, posel. Shall orla. If it is, um, within its first three years of having been planted, posel. You can't use it. Shall chuma tmea, posel. And if the, uh, Esrig is from Truma that is impure. Apostle. Shall Truma Torah lo yitov im not kosher. If the Esrig is from Truma that is, um, uh, pure, you shouldn't use it, but if you do use it, it's kosher. Of course, we know what Truma is, right? Truma is when you have a field, so you take 2% and you give it to the coin. Shodmai Beshamai Posun Vasil Machshirin. If the Esrig is Demai, right, you was bought from an Amma Aretz, we're not sure if he separated Miser, which is a 10% tithe that you give to the Levi. So then, um, so when it comes to Demai, so Beshamai says it's possible you cannot use it as an Esrig. Vasil Machshirin, Vasil says you can use it as a Esrig. Shal Miser Sheni Bi Ushalayim. Miser Sheni, of course, is another 10% that you separate from your field and that you eat, but you have to bring it to Jerusalem. So if you're in Jerusalem and you have your esrig and you're, you know, you're in Jerusalem and you're allowed to eat it in Jerusalem. So you can also use it for your esrig. So you shouldn't ideally use it, right? Ideally, you should not use it for your esrig, but if you did, it's kosher. Also, if some kind of a boil, there's some kind of a boil on the majority of the esrig. Not the pit muscle or if the, the top, the pitum, the, 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 with that, that, uh, like branch almost, that thing at the top falls off. Niklaf, if it's peeled, nistak, if it's cla- uh, cracked, split. Nikave, if there's a hole, v'chaser kol shu, and, it's, and now the esrig is lacking somewhat. Posel, it's a posel esrig. Also, chazaz is muto, but if there's a boil only on like a, a minority of the esrig, notol ukzo, or if the bottom of the esrig was removed. Nikave, v'lo chaser kol if you sort of pierce it with like a very thin needle, but the esrig isn't really lacking any, um, I guess, volume. Or mass. 
So then, then kosher. Esrig akushi posel. A black esrig is a posel esrig. Vayaru kichati. What if it's green like a leek? Reb Meir machshir. Reb Yudu poser posel. Reb Meir says it's a kosher esrig. Reb Yudu says it's a posel esrig. Shir esrig cotton. What's the smallest size that an esrig could be? Reb Meir omer keegos. Reb Meir says it could be as small as a nut. Reb Yudu omer kebeya. Reb Yudu says it could be uh, the smallest amount is a the size of an egg. Uvigadol. When it comes to a large esrig, Kedeshi Yochas Shnayim Biyado de Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says you have to be able to hold two in one hand. Rabbi Yosi Omer Afilu Echa B'Shteyado. Rabbi Yosi says you can even be so large you can even hold one, take two hands to hold one esrig. Something that I just realized now, which is interesting. It says that according to Rabbi Yehuda, the minimum size for an esrig is the size of an egg and the maximum size is to be able to hold two in one hand. That, that's a very small window for a Akiva. I mean, to hold two eggs in one hand versus the maximum, you know, but meaning it has to be the size, it has to be at least the size of an egg. And the maximum size is that you have to be able to hold two of them in one hand, which is probably not much larger than an egg. Also, of course, it depends on the size of your hands. Okay, that was Daf Lamadal of Masech Sukkah. We, we covered a lot of ground today, which is very interesting. We talked about Aravis, the requirement uh, the, for Aravis, that essentially we say, um, really the only thing that seems to be excluded is like Tzav um, But otherwise, uh, yeah, Aravis, I don't know. Get it at your local, um, you know, Sukkah Dalad Minim flea market. Um, then we moved on to discussing... Um, how we, uh, at the, right, how many of each we do, which is interesting. We saw machlokas between Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Tarfin, and Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Shmuel says that you take, uh, which is basically what we do, right? One lulav, one esrig, three adasim, two aravis. And Rabbi, Tar, Rabbi, Rabbi Shmuel then had this, um, additional point, which was interesting, which is, uh, oh, so Rabbi Shmuel actually in the end changed his, so interesting, we pass, that's basically what we do, right? Three Adasim, two Aravis, one Lulav, one Esrig. Rabbi Shmuel actually though did in the end change his uh, decision, cha- change his opinion to be that actually all you need is one Hados. Um, Rabbi Tarifin says that you need three Adasim, but they can all be clipped, which is interesting. And Rabbi Kiva says that one of each. One Lulav, one Esrig, one Hados, one Arava. Um, okay, we saw it. Rabbi Dezer says, that you do not need to include um, um, the esrig together in the hoshaina because um, sort of uh, in the pasuk esrig is on its own and the rest of the three minim uh, are together. And it also says ulakachtom that you need all four species. Right? If you miss one, um, it, then 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 it's no good. You have to have all four of them. And then we moved on to the third mission of the day, which talks about uh, the esrig and all of the requirements for what makes a kosher esrig. I hope you enjoyed the Aflamadal. Hope you enjoy your day. Peace out.